Mm-hmm. She had a match against Brandy Lauren, which was really cool. And then mm-hmm. from then on, I've just kind of been slowly picking up steam, um, just working with a bunch of different amazing companies. For sure. And uh, just we're going to introduce you on the show officially, of course. This is Sean Lamb with the Pro Wrestling Enforcer Podcast. And of course, joining me from uh, Wisconsin is Chris Grams, my co-host. And we welcome Chicago women's wrestler Jay Raves to the Pro Wrestling Enforcer Podcast. And of course, Jay has been part of the Freelance Wrestling Rise and Early to Rise uh, event that where uh, she made her debut for the company. And uh, we saw you at Galley Lucha Libre yesterday as well. And, of course, next you'll be featured on uh, WWN, uh, Worldwide Wrestling Network, for Shine 65. And that's going to be next weekend, February 29th. You'll be taking on La Rosa Negro. And it'll be fun to hear what uh, the rising town has to say about her future. And uh, this is one of the most exciting times of pro wrestling. So let's just get right into it. And uh, my, my, my next question for you, Jay, is I talk about discovering pro wrestling and wanting to learn and perform in front of people do you have how did you develop that passion okay so well first off thank you guys so much for having me on the show i appreciate it um as far as discovering wrestling uh kind of a great story i have a friend um actually um um a guy that i was dating at the time he invited me over to a friend's house who was having a pay-per-view party it was actually uh, money in the bank and I was like, I'm not going there. Like, that's weird. Like, I don't really want to watch wrestling with a bunch of dudes. Um, so mm-hmm. I was like, no, I don't really want to go. I ended up going. And I remember I was having the most fun out of anyone there. I was like, oh, my gosh, like, who are these people? I was sitting, like, front row. <laughs> I didn't even, like, care about the party. I was just having so much fun watching wrestling. And I remember one of the first people that I saw was Dean Ambrose. And I was like, this is so cool. Like, he just had a swag about him and just like a, like a don't F with me vibe, you know? And I was like, this is so cool. (laughs) Um, After that, I went to three more pay-per-view parties, like the next consecutive months. And then I started watching Raw and SmackDown, like in my free time. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm getting way too into this. (laughs) And, um... So I actually messaged someone who I knew was on the indie circuit. Mm-hmm. And I was like, hey, how do I get into this? Where do I start? Who do I see? I sent him like a two-page novel. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I was like, how do I get into this? And um, he was like, okay, go to this show. And I remember it was um, December 2017. I went to um, a, an underground show, which is now Freelance Underground. Okay. Um, and formerly underground, I went to that show and I met my trainer, uh, Bryce Benjamin or Jesus Bryce, um, mm-hmm. that night. And he's been wrestling for about definitely over 15 years now. So yeah. he's got a lot of experience, a ton of knowledge. Um, so I remember I started the, the next year in 2018, um, mm-hmm. that February I started. So, Bryce. um, after that December show. And I remember we were looking at photos before we went, this was my first like live pro wrestling event too. So I remember I was like, I, I like um, Googled the company and I was like, Oh, this doesn't look good. You know, there's guys with pink fringe and like, <laughs> I'm like, it's not going to be good. I don't know, man. But we went and it was actually a really good show. And um, yeah, I, I haven't stopped since. So I, I think wrestling for me is like, um it's everything now that i've been doing it it's everything that i've ever wanted to do but in one job like acting modeling fitness having a a large platform to inspire other people to just branch out and do what they love you know and and do it without being judged for sure yeah that's that's the beauty of pro wrestling nowadays and i mean you mentioned bryce we had him on the show before and Man, the first time I got to see Bryce perform probably was in 2007, my first independent show ever. So he does you date back. His first show? I'm sorry? You said you saw him at his first show. Oh, it was my first show. My oh, first your show. first show. Oh, my gosh, yeah. that's so cool. Yeah, I think it was uh, it had be like uh, December or November of 2007. I went to AAW. 
Oh my gosh, yeah, that's so cool. <laughs> and just seeing like you know, you know where how far the company's come, but just how far you know the Chicago town has come is amazing. And, and this is the best time I think to be a independent wrestler. Me too. And Chris, do you have any question? Do you have a question? Oh, definitely. Seeing that you brought up a name like Ambrose, formerly known as, as we know him now, as John Moxley, could you see yourself working in AEW when several other women's wrestlers who are in the indie market have blown up and now are working with All Elite? Um, I think that my wrestling future is kind of unknown. I would love to work for WWE. That's kind of my dream. However, I don't see why I wouldn't take the opportunity to work for AEW. Like, if that came up in my career, I don't see why I wouldn't. I think that by the time I get to that stage, that point in my life, when I want a contract, I think I will... The, the AEW will be even way further beyond what they are now, you know? So... Yeah, for sure. For sure. For sure. I'm sorry? I think either one would be great. I think oh, any sure. opportunities that come my way, I, it doesn't matter whether it be AEW, Impact, um, you know, Ring of Honor, or WWE, whatever that might be. And, like, your first match ever, talk about that experience while it's still, you know, somewhat fresh in your head. I know it was last October, like you said, but, you know, getting into the ring and stepping in front of a crowd, you know, most people don't have the nerves to do that. So talk about... You know, how was it overwhelming for you or was it just what you imagined? Mm, it was not what I imagined, <laughs> okay. especially because, um, you know, just doing practice matches is not the same at all. Like mm -hmm. um, it gives you an idea of how you should be performing and training. But when you're actually out there, when you actually come out from that curtain, um, it's very nerve wracking. I remember when I came out. I mean, I didn't really know. I, I didn't have confidence in the way that I was moving, especially when I was coming to the ring, like my entrance and stuff like that. I'm still working at that stuff, but it's definitely getting a lot more confident. I would say beforehand, just the nerves and then the lack of confidence and then actually being in there and feeding off people's energy is a little bit different. Especially in the beginning, I feel like um, you get really caught up in, you know, what are, what are we doing next? You know, how do we, right. rather than focusing on, you know, we don't really have to fly through this match. We can totally play off the crowd. We can totally improv. We don't have to, not everything has to be black and white, you know. Um, and I think in that first match, everything was black and white for me. And it was very like... Like, I can't mess up, you know, I can't forget this. Um, so I just say, would say, I think that the nerves and then just the the um, lack of confidence within myself while coming out and actually being in the ring, a lot of that has changed, and it's going to continue to change, but definitely that's what I would say about my first match. It was awkward, <laughs> and it was not the most comfortable. I mean, I did it, I got through it, and... Um, that's all you can do, you know? Definitely. And, I mean, obviously with time, you're going to get more comfortable. And I'm sure you probably made a lot of stride in the past, you know, three to four months and you, you know, than you probably thought was possible. Yeah. I mean, and I just feel like I'm very blessed because I I have been getting a lot of opportunities just, just even by networking or just going to a show and just, like, Honestly, just like setting up chairs or picking up trash or just taking an interest in a company, like they'll take an interest in you, you know? So, like, you really do get what you give it, you know? Definitely. And, and, and you know, not to be on a negative note, but I know, you know, it's talking to promoters and other wrestlers and stuff. There's a lot of people that think they can come in and, like, you know, just watch the show free and then they don't even help with the setup. I know even mm -hmm. like wrestlers that don't even do flyering for the promotions. So you definitely have that, you know, that, that mentality to get ahead that most don't, don't have. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to, but I also, I feel like that's my personality, but also that's how I was like, I like to say that's how I was raised as a wrestler. Like both my trainers are really respectable people who, I mean, like they teach everyone there just 
to have respect for anyone and everything because you never know. You don't know who's watching because everyone's watching, you know? Right. And you have anything, Chris? Oh, definitely. I was going to say, I was just going to say, where did you get your inspiration for your ring attire, your ring character, your character in general, your moves, everything? So, um, I had this completely different idea in the beginning, and I may still go back to it, so I don't want to spoil it. But I've changed characters, like, maybe, like, the idea, <laughs> maybe, like, two or three times. But I landed on this character, Jay Raves, because my personality is very, like, rainbows and unicorns, I would say, like, my actual personality. I'm a very positive person, very motivational But I, in my real life as well, love to have fun. I just like to have fun in general. So I think this character is fun. This character is very positive. It's very euphoric. It's very psychedelic and dance and rave. And I love that culture as well. I like going to shows. I like the idea of living in a world where there's not... You know, people are judgment-free, and there's not a lot of hostility, and I feel like that's definitely the rave culture. I mean, the drugs probably help, but <laughs> but um, I, I do like that world. I like the euphoria of it. So I wanted to translate that into a character, and I wanted people to feel my energy, and I wanted people to feel good when they're watching me. Awesome. Yeah, and uh, we got to see you at uh, Rise, or early to Rise, rather. It was part of the Rise and Shimmer weekend, and I know you were taking the seminars, correct? Yeah, um, there was a seminar with Taya Valkyrie mm-hmm. that day, and that was pretty cool. We did a lot of um, in-ring work, and just kind of, she showed us a little bit of lucha, and then um, the second half of the afternoon, we had a seminar with Conan, and he's brilliant, so he just, we didn't do anything physical with him, but just asking him questions and him giving his blunt opinion on everything. Um, he's a very truthful person, which which helps you in the business. Definitely, yeah. Picking the mind of a great uh, legend like that. I, I feel like he should be in the Hall of Fame soon for anything. He should. He should. Multiple Hall of Fames, yeah. And then, so being part of that early to rise and featured on, I, well, I guess it was a dark match. I, I, when I went back, I didn't see your match. Uh, uh, but you, you wrestled... Um, uh, Jody another Threat. great and Jody Threat. Yeah, so talk about that, that experience being part of Early to Rise. Okay, so Early to Rise was my Chicago debut. Mm-hmm. Um, it was supposed to be my first wrestling match ever, but right. actually, you know, a few weeks before that, I went to Atlanta. I did the Evolve show. Then I was on Evolve the next day, and then I did two more shows in Atlanta. So Early to Rise, I think, was my fifth match or fourth match, Mm -hmm. and um, going into that, um, Jody was super helpful, Um, we bounced a ton of ideas off each other, she's very smart, super, she's got some experience under her belt as well, so being there, being in front of friends and family was really cool, because that's a lot of the, um, basically everyone that, like all my friends and family, they didn't get to see me wrestle until that point. Um, so that was really cool because they got to see all my hard work um, kind of come together, especially because, you know, I I definitely, <laughs> I'm, I tell people all the time, I'm like, no, sorry, I got wrestling. No, sorry, I got wrestling. So after all those years, they're like, oh, man, all right, finally we get to watch this girl wrestle. Um, but I would say it was a good time. It was a great experience. I can't wait to do Rise again. Um, this is going to be the final ride show in March, but mm-hmm. it's definitely, I mean, I'll never lose those connections and the experience is really good and it's a great um, environment to learn. I know we're so fortunate that uh, Kevin Hardy had put this together. I mean, you know, four years ago, there was no you know promotion for women to train, take seminars specifically for women's wrestlers and really uh, having this opportunity is, is it's just worked out so well. You know, like we see Shanti Blackheart uh, go to the WWE and NXT, among others. So it, I, I think it's just amazing, you know, what Kevin had done for uh, for young talents such as yourself. And 
Uh, you're also going to be doing another seminar, or is it more of a tryout uh, for the, the upcoming uh, Rise weekend? And talk about that. So I think it's kind of a little bit of both. Um, okay. It is a seminar. I'm not sure who's going to be hosting that seminar. Mm -hmm. um, but I do know that there's going to be um, some different recruits there looking for different companies. Um, so I think that there will be a lot that goes into it. Um, we had to make a promo video and say that why we wanted to be a part of it um, because it's just gonna he's gonna use that for them as well, mm -hmm. so they can take a look at our promo abilities as well as our in ring matches. Um, I think it's gonna be um, definitely some life changing events for some people. I yeah. feel like um, it's always a great opportunity and. Mm -hmm. I mean, working with Kevin in general has been really awesome. He's really knowledgeable, and he knows what looks good and what doesn't. He's been in the business for 20 years-ish as well. So he, he's seen a lot of things. Um, so I, I think it's, I feel really grateful um, for doing it, and I can't wait to wrestle. I can't wait to see who I wrestle. Um, so I think that it will be a really good event, and I think that it will be a really good turnout as well. Definitely. Oh, yeah. The last early to rise was really good. And I think it was a, it's a lot of fun. But yeah, the case for a change, you know, having these promotions, if one promotion were to ask you to not be a wrestler and to be a valet, what would your response be? Would that be still something you're open to? Or would you have to decline? So it's definitely something I'm open to. But just mm -hmm. like wrestling, I think that takes time. And I think it takes time to get good at it. And I right. think you have to be with the right person. Um, okay. like if someone just randomly like threw me in there as their valet, I don't think it would work, but yeah. if it was like very planned and coordinated and I had time to work at being how, whatever type of valet you need me to be, then yeah, I'm totally open to that. Ultimately, I want to be a wrestler, but again, like I think to be a, an amazing wrestler, you should learn all aspects of it. Absolutely. Like at training, I practice being a referee. Not because I want to be a referee, but I think it's important to know how to use a ref, and it's important to know where to be standing and where they should be standing and how they can help you. So, like, I do learn that stuff at practice, and I just, like, I learn how to be a base, too, you know? It, I'm not necessarily going to be basing dudes or a lot bigger women than me, but whenever I have the opportunity or if I can, I want to learn every aspect of wrestling because that makes you the greatest. For sure. Uh, Chris, do you have anything? Chris? Chris, are you there? Uh, Chris, where'd you go, man? <laughs> <laughs> Chris is taking a nap. <laughs> Chris? Was I so boring? No, I'm just kidding. I'm here. Yeah, do you have, a, do you have anything? <laughs> yes. I was going to say, turning at your short time in Freelance Academy and Freelance Underground, what did you learn from it, and what was your favorite match and the takeaway? What have I learned from training? Yeah, from Freelance Academy, and what did you take away from the experience and everything? Okay, so I'm still currently training. I don't think people should stop training in this industry um, because it shows, like, I can feel the difference and I can see a difference in how people move that were trained at my school versus not trained at all or trained poorly at another school. Um, it's pretty drastic, the difference. Uh, we train four nights a week. And those doors are always open. Um, our coaches are always willing to take questions, even not at school. You can always call them up or message them, and they're there for you. Um, I think our school provides something different in the fact that not only are we training for wrestling, but we're also training to be athletes. Um, Isaiah Velasquez is the one of the trainers, and... I honestly have to say in a lot of ways he's changed my life because he's taught us how to take care of our bodies in ways that no one's ever showed me as far as like prehab and rehab and stretching and moving and um, 
also just doing workouts that are focused on wrestling and focused on the movements of wrestling. That's definitely altered my game physically and in the ring. And I don't think that's offered anywhere else. So that's pretty amazing. Um, definitely. So I definitely take that away. We also do crazy intense drills. So not only are we, again, wrestling. And there's also an advanced class. The advanced class, we do a little bit more crazier stuff, more of the dives and the high-flying stuff. Um, we also work on promos and a little bit of character work as well. And then on top of that, the drills and all that stuff. So I feel like I – if. I do feel like if I wanted to try out for any major company, I would have a good sense of what they're looking for as far as the basics and actually being physically ready to handle it. Again, which I I, I couldn't be more gr- grateful for where I am at this academy. It's pretty amazing what they offer. So I, I take all that stuff away from this and... I believe you asked me something about what has been my favorite match. Is that what you asked? Yes. To this point. Um, what was that? I think my favorite match thus far, I'm a huge believer in in-ring chemistry. Like, it's totally a thing. And it's non-spoken. It's just something that happens and it feels amazing when it's there. It feels amazing because it's like, oh, it's like all your timing is right. All your selling is right. All your moves feel good. Nobody gets hurt. Everybody's safe. Like there's, there is a such thing as chemistry for sure. And I would say thus far, my favorite match I've had because I had such good in-ring chemistry was with, um, her name's Raven Black. I don't know if you guys know her. And um, Definitely. she actually wrestles out of Pura Heights. And she's a badass. She's like a mom of three, which I didn't even know. <laughs> so I met her. I'm like, what? You have three kids, you know? And um, I, don't, I don't know. We just had a really amazing match from start to finish. And really good communication, too. Wow. Definitely. That's awesome. I actually watched uh, some of that match, too. Yeah, she's super cool. And I would say another match that I really loved was my first time ever been in, being in, like, a multi-man match was actually my match at Shine. I was in a six-way scramble, and it was pretty crazy to put together because listening to six different people, six different ideas, and then trying to put that all together and make it look good was hard. But the end product, I feel like, was so bomb. And I don't think anyone expected it to be that amazing. And it was super cool. I also love that match. Definitely. And then you've also done the intergender matches. You had a, a tag team match at the, the freelance uh, wrestling show in January. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. Yeah. That was cool. Um, the only reason why it's not my favorite match is because a couple of things got mixed up in it. But oh, okay. overall, okay. I, I did learn a lot from that. Yes. Yeah, that was a that was a fun one for you, and just being on the pre-show is is, is good, right? Because there's less fans there, um, people are still coming to the door, so you get to like more the small crowd than rather if you had the big crowd on you. Not saying you're not ready for that, but you know, it's still good to work out the cake. No, crowd. yeah, definitely cool to work. I mean, either way, things are gonna happen in wrestling matches mm-hmm. that go wrong, so you have to know how to fix that because a true professional is gonna cover that up. And I would strive for perfection when I'm out there, and it's not easy. So, I mean, we tend to be really critical of ourselves, but the, the more perfect I can get it, the better, of course. And if we mess something up, like, how do I cover that up and make it look super smooth and, like, it was totally planned, you know? That's always my goal as well. So, because things are going to get mixed up. People are going to forget things. Yeah. You know, things aren't going to go as planned. So... How you fix that, I think, makes you a true professional. Right. Sometimes the timing is off yeah. as well. Right. Um, so you're on the Shine 65. So talk about, you know, being actually promoted on the card, a huge opportunity. I mean, obviously, you were at the event, I think, in Chicago and, of mm-hmm. course, New York and uh, Atlanta, like you mentioned. So 
now you have the, a featured match and you're taking on La Negra Rosa. And how do you feel about that opportunity? Um, I feel extremely grateful. Um, I built these connections, which is really cool. And I love the whole team that works with Shine. And I love the WWN team in general. They're all super professional. And the show that they put on is really professional. I do really respect uh, that company a ton. So the opportunity to be working with them and actually being promoted and actually having a, a singles match is really, really cool. Because I know what I'm capable of and I know what I can show case. And I think that La Rosa and I are going to also work really well together. Her style is Lucha. My style is Lucha American. So I think um, we're going to put something really special together. So I really, I, I actually, it's going to be amazing. I can't wait. Awesome. And uh, Chris, do you have anything? Chris, did we lose you again? <laughs> <laughs> He's not with it. It's so great. I love it. <laughs> well, then I'll, I'll ask you just in general, like women's yeah. wrestling. Here, was, oh, no, go ahead. My mic wasn't working. <laughs> You're all good. No worries. All right. I was going to say, as we're going along, why don't we start getting to the quick spots for fun, Sean? Oh, yeah, for sure. Well, yeah, I was going to, but I was just going to ask her before that is, the women's wrestling in general, how do you feel it's exploded? And is this the most exciting time to be a wrestler? Um, yes and yes. Super exploding right now. I think there's so many opportunities. And since so many, especially for me, since so many women have been promoted or um, contracted to WWE or AEW, it's leaving a lot of holes in the independent scene. And as a freelance wrestler, as a freelance artist, I think it's creating massive opportunities in the independent level because now they're looking for new talent. They want to build new storylines. It's really important to keep nurturing good talent because otherwise they're left with these holes because people are bound to get better and better and better, and they're going to want better for themselves, of course. So bigger and better, we're all, we're all searching for it. So I think right now is the best time, and it's an amazing time for me. And I can't wait to keep getting opportunities and keep growing and keep traveling and meeting new people. Um, I, I think it's epic. And women's wrestling, wrestling in general, I think is being really pushed right now. And yeah. it's so it's so cool that we're being like featured because women like it's a different type of wrestling, but we are just as athletic, we are just as capable. We could put on bomb matches. So I think it's cool that that's being noticed. Yeah, definitely agree. And, and Chris, go ahead with the quick spots. Oh, yes. Just say, favorite ninja turtle. <laughs> Everyone has fun. <laughs> just, just My glass off. Fun. <laughs> favorite ninja turtle is Michelangelo. All right. You're Sean. All right. Favorite song to play on the road. Oh, man. I always have, like, um, every day I feel like I have a new song. But right now, I've been listening to a lot of, um, I have Sirius Radio, and I listen to Diplo's Revolution Station. And it's usually just a bunch of um, uh, random DJs with, like, mashups. <laughs> cool. Cool. Nice, nice. Favorite move to use in the ring? Mm, probably Harocha. And your favorite cheat meal? Definitely like a big juicy burger. Uh, deep, deep dish pizza or thin crust pizza? Um, thin crust. Okay. And go ahead. Chris. Favorite horror film? Favorite horror film? I hate horror yeah. movies. Mm. Oh, okay. No, I, I literally <laughs> hate horror movies. I stay away from it. But okay. like, the only horror movie I've really watched is like Halloween, and that one's cool. I like Halloween. I will say I like Halloween. But I really, in general, don't like horror movies at all. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm not a big fan either. <laughs> you scare uh, me. Yeah. They're crazy. Uh, Game of Thrones or Witcher? What is Witcher? 
It's a new show that's out on Netflix. Well, definitely cool. Game of Thrones, because okay. I don't even know what Witcher is. <laughs> you got to check out Witcher. It's, it's the number one I'll check it out. Show. Is it like a, it's like a Game of Thrones, like, riff? No, a little bit. It's a fantasy, but it's a, it's, it's a little different. It's quite different. It's okay. based on a Polish author and his novels. It's fantasy, but it's, it, there's actually more creatures and stuff in, in The Witcher. Okay. I'll more definitely check it out. Too. More blood and guts. <laughs> Okay, I'm into it. I'm into it. Yeah. Um, Modelo or Margarita? Margarita. All right. And then my last one is gummy worm, gummy beers or gummy worms? Gummy worms. Okay. <laughs> and that's all you okay. have, Chris? That's all I have. My phone is breaking up, so. Oh, okay. Well, well, we'll close it out. Uh, uh, Jay, I appreciate you. It was a really pleasure to have you on Pro Force Forza Podcast, and uh, please come by again. Uh, I guess we'll see you at the next show that you're going to be doing that will be at is uh, Rise. Rise. Oh uh, I'll, I'll actually be at the uh, Freelance Underground in March, but I'm not sure if you'll be part of that one. Um, yeah, I'll be there. I'm not okay. sure if I'll be on the show, but I'll definitely be there. Oh, cool, cool. So we'll definitely, you know, see you around. I also frequent Galley Lucha. I haven't done it in a while, so if you happen to be on one of those shows... We'll catch you. But uh, this is a chance for you to just uh, thank anyone or plug your social media. Cool. So I thank everyone for everyone's support, especially the people that have been on my journey from day one that know when wrestling was just an idea. And now it's become real and it's going to get more and more real as I go down the road. So thank you to anyone who has supported me from day one and believed in me even when I didn't believe in myself. And as far as my social media, you can find me on Instagram at jrave underscore let the good times roll. And that's also my Twitter as well. I'm still learning Twitter. I'm not amazing at it, but <laughs> but I'm trying to tweet more. And um, my Facebook is just my real first and last name, but I am going to be making a fan page really soon here, which will be jraves. Well, let us know. We'll definitely follow it and tell everyone to follow it on our our own on our end as well and we appreciate you yeah definitely we appreciate you on the show and uh you know it'll be a stranger well we won't be a stranger we'll, we'll come say hi to you at the next event and uh please again, come say hi to me so i can oh, actually definitely. meet you <laughs> yes yes and uh yeah that's all i have and uh, again it's just been a pleasure having you and good luck of course in the future good luck in your match uh next week at uh shine 65 thank you so much thank you guys so much Anytime. all right we'll talk soon Take care. Okay, bye-bye. Take care.